Welcome to Book Club, and today I'm going to be reviewing and flipping through every page of the LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary Updated Edition. Not to be confused with the LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary, the LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary Updated and Expanded, or the LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary New Edition. I'm very curious what they're going to call the next one. Now, this book was published in April of 2024, and even upon its release, it already feels like it's six months outdated, as it doesn't have any 2024 LEGO Star Wars sets, or even the UCS Venator that came out in October of 2023. So, yeah, this book already feels pretty outdated. It's certainly not atypical of these LEGO Star Wars visual dictionaries, but it's something you should know if you're planning on buying it. Speaking of buying it, this thing cost $25 in the US. For reference, the first one that came out in 2009 only cost $22, so these have been surprisingly inflation resistant. There is an exclusive Darth Maul minifigure inside, and if you look at the sticker that's holding the cardboard down, I don't know what's going on with my sticker, but the print for it is really weird. It looks fuzzy. It's like you're looking at something that's supposed to be 3D without 3D goggles. Anyway, I'm going to try to remove this sticker without breaking it too much. There we go, and it looks like just a tab to pull up on. Okay, I don't feel like this is really theft proof. Like it's pretty common for figures in these books to be stolen. Let's someone go. Stole the no, this is the, someone stole the, oh my God. God. And usually they would have a plastic window where you could see if the figure was included or not. But technically when you buy this book, you won't know if your Darth Maul figure is in there or not because that's what it looks like. So very interesting. Definitely if you see this book on a store shelf, make sure you check for any signs of tampering inside the book before you go ahead and buy it because there's a chance your Darth Maul minifig could have been stolen. I am also hoping to get these books direct from the distributor and I'll have them on my website, mnrshop.com at retail price. So if you want to support the channel and know that your Darth Maul is not stolen, if it's available, I'll have a link in the description below. So the Darth Maul on its own looks great and on his back, it has the 25 years of Lego Star Wars logo, very similar to what we saw for the 2019-20 anniversary Lego Star Wars minifigs, although this one technically doesn't fit in with the other 25th anniversary figures that include the 25th anniversary bases. So in that way, this one is kind of an odd one out specifically made for this book. So from left to right, we have the 1999 figure, 2007 figure, and then the 2024 figure. And the real only difference is the printing on the eyes. That in 2007 was much nicer than it was in 1999. And it is also much nicer on this 2024 reproduction. And so while the back of the book says this is inspired by the 1999 figure, it technically is a reproduction of the 2007 figure. And getting right into our page by page flip through, there's gonna be about 160 or so pages. We have an introduction with some history about Lego Star Wars and this visual dictionary's history. Then we have some info on the data boxes, which we are gonna see throughout the book. And then into the good stuff with the timelines, including some of the sublines and different sets that they were releasing uh, over the years, including the pocket-sized at, at I like that, cool. I uh, got the legendary Cloud City set down there. This book is going to be riddled with errors. So if you see any, catch anything, I'm certainly not going to catch them all. Drop them down in the comments section below with a timestamp or a page number. And I, I doubt they'll ever fix it, but at least they'll be somewhere where we can all take a look at what they messed up in this book. They just always have so many errors. The first one I noticed was this Mustafar set 2005, but this build here is from 2012 and then they cropped it terribly. Very nice. Then the Jabba's sail barge here from 2006. Well, that Sarlacc pit is actually from 2017. The 2006 Sarlacc pit looks nothing like that. So just simple, basic errors, things you shouldn't mess up, things that any like reasonably decent fan of the product would know. And yeah, just right off the bat, just two big errors. Um, but yeah, there's other cool things throughout this timeline you can pause and take a look at, zoom into. Love that gold C3PO there. That's the 24 or rather 14 uh, carat gold version there they say and yeah just some really cool sets from the late 2000s early 2010s everyone knows those were kind of the golden true golden years of the theme uh, where everything was just kind of improving year over year and something certainly peaked uh, then we get into the mid 2010s right here is kind of where the Disney Lego Star Wars set started they started putting the logo on the boxes uh, we had the 20th anniversary there in 2019 and yeah I mean just kind of recent history things that uh, everyone really knows about here with like the max and the four plus sets that sell terribly. But yeah, here we have the chapter one, the fall of the Republic. So we're gonna actually get to start out with some of the cooler like Clone Wars sets, starting with Anakin Skywalker's page. So like I said, this book is not gonna have everything. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna try not to hit the mic. I think I just might've tapped it. But the Naboo Starfighter here, there's like five different versions of a playset Naboo Starfighter, but they're only gonna show like one. And so that's something that I like don't love about these books. And I wish there was a book that like had every everything. So I don't know if that will ever come in the future or if I have to make my own, whatever the case is. I just, one day I want to have a book that has 
everything. So that's, yeah, this is just like my biggest disappointment with, with this book at this point. If I'm recalling correctly, the original dictionary had every set, but again, that was only every set to 2009. So like it wasn't that many sets compared to what we have today. I don't necessarily think that's a reason not to buy this book. You're still going to see a lot of cool stuff inside and learn a lot of cool stuff you might not have known, but just know that it doesn't have everything. Now this page, the Podraiser page is pretty neat. I'm uh, kind of surprised they didn't put like the 20th anniversary Anakin's Podraiser on here. They actually put like the set that had Sebulba's and Anakin's Anakin's from 2011 there. And interestingly enough, they even talk about the pod racer bucket. So there's the, the start finish line there. And then the other pod racers from the pod racing bucket. So it's kind of split here, which is weird. I wish they'd kept it together because it, I think could be confusing to people. But my buddy Sands pointed out that they put it in the book, but they didn't actually show the thing that makes the pod racing bucket. The, I mean, it's the only ever bucket Lego star Wars set and you don't have a picture of the bucket. I don't know. Just feels like that's something you should have in your book. But regardless, this page is really cool. We have the Obi-Wan Kenobi page with all of his different starfighter interceptor builds uh the blue one i love from 2007 with that blue hyperdrive ring i wish they had had that picture in there too the boga would love to see a return of in 2025 with the revenge of the sith anniversary our next page is about the jedi order and it once again is the same hopefully i can get that glare off the same like picture of jedi bob they've used this picture i think since 2009 i'm gonna try not to keep going back and forth and referencing the old book, but I just want to prove my point. So there's the Jedi Bob entry from 2009. You'll see it's the exact same picture and exact same text. So rather unfortunately, they did not update anything about this. Even with the modern resurgence of interest in Jedi Bob, the potential release in 2024, it's exactly the same thing as 2009. So yeah, the writers didn't do anything cool there. Otherwise, I think this page gives a really good overview of some of the different type of Lego Jedi that they have made over the years, some of the really cool, unique parts that they have made for some of the Jedi for like one-offs, like just really cool. And hopefully one day on a page like this, we'll be able to see a real Jedi temple, not the Tenu Jedi temple. So maybe, maybe one day. Next page, the Jedi fleet here, Republic Cruiser from 2007, goaded set. Some of the recent sets from the summer of 2023 Three. These are going to be the, the most recent updated sets are the September sets from 2023. So we won't have anything from after September shown in this book. I apologize for the glare. Not a lot I can do about that. Then we have some of the Jedi Starfighters from the early years. Uh, the Anakin's one here from 2018. Chancellor Palpatine, Count Dooku. We have some cool stuff on this page with the original Venator, the Separatist Shuttle. I think that is a mad underrated set, as is Palpatine Shuttle. I think both of these sets are mad underrated. I think that one's overrated quite ironically. And then we have the Duel on Geonosis, Dooku Speeder Bike, and and the Solar Sailor. So no mention of like the original Yoda versus Dooku set, unfortunately. So you just don't get like the full historic view of some of the stuff like this, which is what I, I wish was there. Um, next up, the Sith Infiltrator set, that one being from 2015. So they don't even have the updated 2024 one, like I said. So most recent info, just a slightly outdated as of the release. It talks about the Darth Maul from that particular set. You can see the version with the hood and without the hood there riding on his speeder bike. Very cool. We have some other Sith over here with the Saw's Ventures, Savage Press, beautiful, beautiful figures that they did. That's actually the 2003 figure, not the Clone Wars, or I guess 2008 type style Clone Wars figure. Or really, you would think it'd be this figure because that's kind of what's there, but just a different uh, picture of a different figure there, which is neat. Nice that they at least have it. Here they talk a little bit about the Republic Army, and just something I kind of find disappointing about this book is that this is all there is about the 501st Battle Pack, and everyone knows how the 501st Battle Pack came to be. You would think they would do something about that set in a book like this that's you know about the history about you know it's just stuff like that where i'm just like yeah it feels incomplete it feels like it's not the whole complete truth and history of it uh they don't even show the speeder bike there i don't know if the speeder bike is going to be coming up but i assume not because the bark speeder picture over here is the one from the battle on slukamai looks to me like the reason the complete set got snubbed is because it require work to do more than just switch out the atrt vehicle in the same spot because you'd have to change the layout it's a theme throughout these books now. Got the Bark Speeder or Sidecar, the Swamp Speeder, the newest Turbo Tank, the newest ATTE. I think that's the best ATTE build. I do wish they had put a different Turbo Tank build there. Not just because I just think the other ones are just cooler looking. <laughs> but yeah, moving on, another very cool Republic page uh, with the Republic dropship there. Again, I'll try to get the glare off for you to see as best you can. The ARC-170, got Captain Jag, got the V-19 Torrent, the V-Wing, the other Republic frigate, the Republic attack shuttle, sorry for bumping the mic, and the Coruscant police gunship. Oh, Z-95 Headhunter too, just sitting in the middle there. So very cool, like Lego Star Wars Republic builds on this page flying around. No gunship though, because they kept 
kept a page just for the Republic gunship, which is very cool. They do show the 2013 gunship down there. I think they knew it was the best one and they knew they had to show it. Um, maybe the worst part about this page like, obviously, they've got the fox without showing that he has a pink chest. It's perfectly white. We all know about the false advertising with that and how terrible that is. But uh, what's crazy to me is they write about the troop deck. So they're showing that this part here, they're saying that's the troop deck. And they say the side panels of the gunship, these ones, hinge up. Therefore, it's definitely these ones they're talking about because they say they hinge up. These ones hinge out and over, whatever. And they say it reveals a spacious troop deck with plenty of room for transporting clone troopers. You literally can't fit anything in here. What are they talking about? Like, this doesn't even make sense. It doesn't connect. It doesn't work. You can't literally can't fit anything in there. You could maybe stuff a couple clone troopers in laying down. Like, what a way to write that. That is crazy to me that they even wrote that. Okay, this page, we gotta have to turn this to film it, but it's the clone troopers page. There's a lot of clone troopers on this page. It certainly doesn't have all of them, but it does a pretty good job of splitting them up between phase one and phase two. It also has a complete breakdown of that amazing elite arc trooper from 2012. So you can see it shows off the pauldron armor, the ammo pouch, the DC-17 commando blasters, the camo, etc, etc. There's just a lot of information here. They show off tons of different clone troopers and point out exactly what some of the different things on the armor for the clone troopers are and some of the little details that different ones have compared to other ones. Like, it's just very well done. And quite fittingly, they threw Tan Wei on this page because she, of course, was integral in the creation of the clone army. So you kind of have it all here. It's a pretty sick couple of pages and it's one that I feel like people would almost want a poster of so if you could get a poster of that I bet a bunch of you guys would want to buy it. The separatist page here is pretty sick some interesting choices they chose an older AAT but the newest MTT also uh like this is again why these books are weird to me this book came out like April 2nd 2024 the new super battle droid came out on January 1st 2024 so we're four months outdated on this super battle droid graphic where we could have had the 2024 super battle droid here it's just like you know like do you really care i don't yes i don't know i care i just think it's weird like you should have it it would be nice it would look way cooler to have the full history of super battle droids but really now you have to wait five more years because they make these every five years for them to make another updated one to get the full version that should have come out this year so that's just an unfortunate view on it i have um but yeah they showed the droid transports the stap which again like there's a newer, cooler stap that came out that they could have used there, but again, it's slightly outdated. Got the dwarf spider droid. This one's the 2016 version, so not the version that came in the ATTE in 2022. We've got a recent droidica. We've got the Halfire droid, beautiful Halfire droid build, by the way, spider droid, and then the corporate alliance tank droid. That's one of my favorite like separatist builds for Lego Star Wars ever. Pretty much all three versions of them: 2005, 2009, and this 2013 one. I think they're all amazing. Like, yeah, it's just one of those sets that hits every time for me next up we've got the separatist navy so a bunch of the spaceships here got the vulture droid got the droid gunship the hyena droid bomber one of my least favorite sets ever personally and then the droid tri fighter i can't believe general grievous got an entire page this is pretty sick we've got a very nice side profile shot of the malevolence a set i still haven't built personally i have it sealed i gotta build it this thing looks amazing can't wait got the wheel bike from 2014 they worked in the magna guards which are kind of like his personal guard or they you know are seen with him a lot in the show or in the movie and then we have the grievous figure himself the grievous speeder known as one of the most overpriced sets of all time general grievous is starfighter less overpriced maybe but still a lot of people think it's overpriced and then uh the droid that works on him there a4d so yeah pretty sick general grievous page didn't expect that next up geonosians and then naboo and gungans i just because it's episode one episode two i feel like it should be flipped just like where you see them in movies but very sick page Again, the Gene Ocean builds have always hit for me, so those are great. Uh, those are the modern updated versions of the Gene Ocean Starfighter and the Cannon, but there were also versions, I think, from 2003. We got the Naboo page, which looks pretty sick. Got that updated Gungan sub, that beautiful Flash speeder. Moving on, we have the Umbarans and Mandalorians. A lot of Mandalorians, not so many Umbarans, but mostly Mandalorians here. Pretty sick shot of Gar Saxon. We've got a bunch of the hidden covert Mandalorians here that were all in that one battle pack. So yeah, pretty sick page. I love that. Moving on. Got Bounty Hunters, ooh, the newer Jango Fett, newer young Boba Fett, but of course, because they haven't made a new one, the older Zam Wessel from the Bounty Hunter Pursuit set there. We've got the 
Bounty Hunter Assault Gunship, Cad Bane with his speeder, but not Cad Bane's, well, maybe there's going to be a Bad Batch section, I don't know for sure, I was going to say, no Cad Bane's uh, spaceship, so, <laughs> unfortunate, moving on. Oh, Fallen Jedi page. Here we go. Down there is that 2012 Interceptor I talked about. Of course, a whole page or half page to Palpatine's Arrest, a set that really needs to come back in 2025 as a diorama, as a playset, likely as a diorama, but hopefully will come back in some form in 2025 regardless. And we've got the Dual on Mustafar and then the uh, subsequent <laughs> Rehabilitation Center. That's got to be a joke. That ha they have to have written that as a joke. Like, that's a set name. I don't know. I think I think they wrote that just to be funny. That's my interpretation of calling it a rehabilitation center, because that's funny to me. Anyway, moving on. Oh, this page. Oh, what a classic. 2005. Almost all 2005 on here, except a few 2014 uh, figures. But, man, the Ornithopter, the Catamaran, the full Wookiee Attack set. It was called Wookiee Attack instead of Droid Attack. Of course, we all know it was about the Droid Attack on the Wookiees, not the Wookiee Attack on the Droids. But yeah, beautiful page with some 2005 builds. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's the Justifier, Cad Bane Spaceship. That's a whole page to one of the most overpriced hated sets of all time. I loved it. I thought that set was just fine. We also have the Bad Batch Shuttle on the left there. Had a lot of figures in that set. Great figures. And into the Empire. What a shot. What a great shot of that at, -AT box art. I do wish... It, well, I guess the UCS sets are going to be later. I was going to say you could have used the UCS one here, but this one is also the other best ATAT -AT they have made. First up in this section, we've got an entire page dedicated to Han Solo. It feels like a little bit of a, I get it, the Galactic Civil War is more than just the Empire, but it's ATAT -AT and then it's Millennium Falcon, Han Solo from Solo with a little bit of other original trilogy solo and a brick fact dk lego star wars character encyclopedia 2011 includes this exclusive han minifigure he wears the medal he earned by helping destroy the first death star how cool anyway moving on the ucs money and falcon i think we've all seen this one and know about this one i have a review on my channel that's like seven years old now oh that's scary uh the luke skywalker page uh the t16 skyhopper luke's land speeder quite fitting actually that's our first ucs set right i think yeah and so I guess they might not all be at the end. We'll see. Uh, Luke Skywalker got the Blue Milk Luke X-Wing Starfighter in 2021. The Tatooine Homestead there. Pretty cool. Her large family homestead kitchen. Tatooine page here with the 2018 Sandcrawler. Kind of looks like the UCS one, but smaller. Uh, we have the very tiny Sandcrawler-esque battle pack build and the Tatooine battle pack. The Mos Eisley Cantina. And yeah, there's Luke help i've fallen and i can't get up we have the imperial leaders page palpatine's throne room this one i did look at earlier it is the newer one and they have another brick fact there the imperial star destroyer set 6211 hopefully that's in this book released in 2006 includes a room below decks where vader communicates with a hologram of emperor palpatine the hollow effect is achieved by a sticker on a transparent brick i love that and then we have ooh tarkin krennic ular and thrawn and the inquisitor what a setup up there your all-time starting five for the empire right there that's pretty dope Sorry, starting five, head coach, GM. How's that? I don't want to make it seem like Darth Vader and Palpatine don't count. The Death Star from 2016 here. And actually, the Death Star uh, escape set. That's a pretty cool set, too. Detention cell. I'm surprised they've never made a detention cell set. Maybe it's too close to, like, uh, I don't know. It's been in the big Death Star, but, like, on its own, is it too tortury? Darth Vader's castle, all-time set, mad underrated. I feel like it's, I don't know, I feel like it's probably rated almost, but yeah. Anyway, we got a lot of troopers here from the Empire. Stormtrooper Sergeant, that one was only available in a poly bag. Death Trooper, Shore Trooper, Jump Trooper. I've actually never heard it called that, but Jump Trooper, that one's the one from Battlefront, and then the Range Trooper from Solo. We have the Imperial Army, that at, -AT from 2020, just mint. The Ambush on Ferrix set with the mobile tack pod, kind of like a mini Republic gunship, love that. Imperial Convey X Transport, yeah, some good stuff on this page. The Hoth ATST version, I kind of I wish they had um like talked a little bit about the fact that this is the hoth version it's the only time they've ever made the hoth version surprisingly they got the tie defender down there and even more surprisingly they used the 2018 tie fighter from solo instead of the one from 2021 because they had the 2021 x-wing in this book but not the 2021 tie fighter which is good because that is the all-time best tie fighter playset. that was the right choice surprisingly using the 2006 TIE Interceptor instead of the one from the Mandalorian. So don't know why they did that, because that would have really completed the page to have all like the best gray ones that they've ever done. TIE Bomber down there. I guess Vader's TIE is missing from 2009. The Imperial Transports with the Shuttle Tidarium, Krennic Shuttle, the Landing Craft, AT Hauler. Very, very nice. Like Actually, all of these sets are like all-time great. They're very good builds. Moving on. Oh, yes. They used the good one. Oh, I'm very surprised. 2006 Imperial Star Destroyer instead of the 2014 one. I've never built the 2014 one, but 
This was one of my first really big sets. And uh, yeah, I love this one. No. Oh, okay. I was going to say that is not this one, but that this is a separate box that is the 2014 Star Destroyer. Okay, I was looking at the back and I'm like, that ain't it. I know this set too well. Anyway, moving right along, we have the early Rebel Craft with the Ghost, the Wookiee Gunship. We've got Captain Rex's ATTE and the Rebel Combat Frigate. Very cool. Home on Mon Calamari. This one won the fan vote. Again, this is something that like should be in, that should be a brick fact right here. It should be like the Home on Mon Calamari won the Toys R Us fan vote for 2009. Like, that should just be there. No, no, no. Uh, Tana 4, got the goaded Y-Wing playset from 2017. But yeah, pretty cool Rebel builds there. Battle on Scarif, there's K2SO, U-Wing, very good build. Oh, there's the speeder bike from from the uh, other uh, ambush on Ferrix set. I uh, got the Echo Base from 2011 there. Not the best Echo Base ever, in my opinion. This one's like one of the messier builds they've ever released. It's like really hard to know what's going on with a lot of this stuff. We've got the Rebels on Hoth. And again, I just kind of have to question, like, you've got the 2014 Snow Speeder here instead of the 2019 one i'm gonna assume this one from 2019 did not have the 2019 snow speeder this is the same exact timeline in the book from five years ago well most of it's the same there are a few different changes but they didn't fix like the fact that this is the wrong mustafar set and they changed the sarlacc pit to be the wrong sarlacc pit in the new oh my goodness why are we finding this out like 12 minutes into this video i just wanted to see if there was a snow speeder somewhere in here oh my god these but dude they didn't even change oh my god these absolute bums did nothing holy crap sorry they added a purple outline i think the bottom book is the new book and that is the old book from 2019 and in 2019 a new snow speeder came out so you'd think they'd put the new snow speeder in the new book and they didn't i'm not going to spend all the time to figure out which pages are exactly the same but it's i mean this is the same page all they changed was that they made some of the outline colors like a little bit different on the new book compared to the old book so it pops a little bit better like i like that but they did no work to actually expand and up like they call it updated, right? Or did they just call this one new? You're gonna call this an updated edition and not actually update it to include like the, the newest set that came out five years ago. You're gonna keep the one that came out 10 years ago. This is absolute tomfoolery. Absolute tomfoolery. This, wow, this is Lego Star Wars in a nutshell though. Holy crap, what laziness. One more thing I'll add since this is a review. This is the 2019 books Lego Technic page and this is the 2009 books Lego Technic page. They are basically exactly the same. And that's okay because there was nothing really to add to a Lego Technic page. Why this is particularly bad is because there was absolutely something to add. You're calling this an updated edition and not actually updating it with whatever the latest information and sets are. That is dirty, dirty, dirty in my opinion. But it's not a bad page, it's just way outdated now because there is way better new information in sets. So yeah, like even the Hoth like minifig pack should be here and that's not here. Got the newest Boba Fett starship. So they skipped over, I'm not gonna find the 2019 20th anniversary Boba Fett slave one. Um, so it actually it would be quite interesting to see. I don't think this, I gotta find the slave one. Ooh, if the UCS Slave 1 is here, will they call it the Slave 1? Because all of the sets have the official set name. Like, that's the whole point of it. So I want... Oh, no, they did change. They called it Boba Fett Starship up here for this, too. This is a great Cloud City set, by the way. Massively underrated at the time it was released. Like, no, I went to the day one release of this. I was one of three people that showed up for the release of this set. Like, nobody cared. So, I was, so yeah, it was wild. I was showed up three hours early too. I thought it was going to be a big line. Nobody was there. So it's kind of crazy. And that was at the Orlando uh, Lego store at Disney Springs where it's usually really, really busy. It's very cool. They did this one vertical because they can show the integration of the Rancor pit with the palace just perfect. And you got a little blurb there for Rod of the Hut. So that's pretty cute. That works well. The 2013 Jabba Sail Barge on the next page here, you got Max Rebo and Reyes or Reyes. And then we have the Sarlacc pit from 2017. Like I was saying earlier, they showed the 2006 year with that one that was wrong uh we have the battle of endor crazy they still have not made a new endor bunker playset or master builder series set. i was sure it would have happened by now maybe next year who knows but yeah uh the 2001 or 2000 b-wing and rebel control center so that's just the rebel control center the b-wing itself is not shown there uh the actual b-wing from 2014 there very good b-wing uh we have the bright tree village i guess that must be its real name the ewok village i've never seen it called bright tree village pretty cool very nice in-depth notes and little bits on this particular set here we then have oh, the mandalorian page is very nice we've got the pram for baby yoda or grogu or the child we have the mandalorian forge we have the Razor Crest itself and his speeder bike from the Treble on Tatooine set. We've got uh, some oh, Cara, well, Cara Cynthia. 
Why not just call her Kara Dune? Who has ever called her Kara Cynthia Dune? Nobody ever in the history. I've never seen it ever. That's crazy. Anyway, moving on. More Mandalorian. Good. They actually spent a little time making new pages and putting new information into the book. What do you know? Din Djarin with the Darksaber. We've got the ATST Raider. Got that Mandalorian Starfighter over there. There's the new TIE Interceptor. So that's why they must have not put it on the uh, TIE Fighter page. But it would have looked nice on that TIE Fighter page, let's be honest. But newer TIE Interceptor there. You got the Pirate Snub Fighter and the Fang Fighter there that we barely ever saw in Season 3. But still is a set nonetheless. Spider Tank's pretty cool. Another Bofet Starship there. And I guess it was important enough to show the landing mode on a micro fighter uh, we've got a bunch of the characters from the throne room from the show don't really care about that set uh, we have more more mandalorian stuff good moff gideon his light cruiser the armored marauder the dark trooper attack some good sets there ahsoka's show sets here or just one set here i guess with the ewing and shin haiti starfighter we actually mixed a couple different sets box arts here because this and this did not come together now we have ray we have nema outpost this set ah oh, 60 dollars was probably too much but i thought it was okay but yeah, it was a weird scenery set. I think the quad jumper escape set is mad underrated just because of its play feature where all of the engines can pop off. Great Jedi training set from 2018 there. Finn and Friends, that would be a good movie name. Uh, we have one of the most hated sets from the sequels, The Wrath Tower Escape. We've got, again, one that a lot of people just call overpriced, Battle on a Taco Donna. I, for a long time, wanted to build a really big Taco Donna mock because I thought it was cool, and then they only really ever showed it in the first, or I guess the seventh movie, episode seven, but the first of the sequels, and uh, yeah. Anyway, first order ATST, moving on more resistance sets even literally from the resistance show i wonder if they're gonna have von reg's tie in here because that one wouldn't have been in the other book either but they at least have the black ace tie interceptor so we'll see if we get von reg somewhere we have the resistance bomber this would see like again this is what i just don't get where are the brick facts about finch dallow why is there not a brick fact finch dallow included at the end of its lifespan this that and they like you know just should be there i don't know poe dameron x-wings Kylo Ren's page is pretty neat. I was going to say they should have done this one on all black, but all the builds are all black. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see anything. Kylo Ren's TIE Fighter, the Knights of Ren transport ship. It's still crazy to me that they actually made all six Knights of Ren. That's crazy. Like, it's really good crazy, but it's crazy. I uh, got the actual, like, good command shuttle, too, so that's pretty cool. Oh, there it is. Wow, Von Rank's TIE Fighter. Very nice. Beautiful set. Love that one. Got the First Order Star Destroyer, Snoke's Throne Room. You got a battle back down there? I kind of like these like five figure setups here where they're just kind of showing like the Navy and Special Forces and stuff for different like legions or factions. Pretty cool. Moving on. First Order Forces, a bunch of First Order builds, the Heavy Assault Walker, Snow Speeder, a couple of these two were never even in the movies, uh, maybe briefly with this one, I can remember if you could see it in the background of something, but this one was not in the movie, it was actually cut, this one had some major scenes that were cut, so both of these sets just ended up being casualties of that, uh, these other builds, uh, especially this one, I love the transport, I wish it got more use, it was so cool in the trailer. Here we have a full two pages for the First Order Troopers, again done vertically, so it can show off all of the troopers and describe them and different aspects about them and their accessories, that is really dope i think that's a, a great job there to show all of that off and specialist sets all right make it our answer to the slave one question with the ucs slave one lego legends in 2014 lucasfilm reclassified the star wars can i like that they say lucasfilm and not disney because uh it's definitely disney's doing right uh, star wars canon with many stories now considered legends these tales come from many different eras of star wars history and a range of media the lego group has produced many sets based on these legends so yeah these are all legends based i I guess technically now it's crazy 2003 clone wars i guess is classified as legends always thought this was a weird one the tie d fighter from the tie collection like i had that as a kid and just couldn't wrap my head around what the point was we had the tie crawler is the fighter tank really legends that's weird i guess clone wars video game it wasn't in the show was it didn't know that anyway moving on lego creations yeah this is where it gets fun so people will often comment on my videos whenever i like say i want lego to do a thing and they'll be like oh it's too niche they couldn't do that. It wasn't in the movie long enough. None of this was ever in anything ever. Lego literally made it up. You can't argue that about anything ever. Like your argument is completely invalid. All of this stuff was made up. And some of these, I, I've still never owned an Arrowhead. I've never owned a Jack 14 Starfighter. I will eventually own these. I've never owned a Jedi Scout Fighter. My goal is to own everything. But these are the three that I did buy of the six on the page here. Um, I remember buying this one early at Target. I remember being excited about it. It actually is probably the best set 
here. Um, it's a really, really cool build and includes a really cool Dangar figure. Nair, I have no idea what the story behind her is, but she was a dope figure in that set and like her ship there is just really cool, really cool function. I wish they would have shown like the uh, expanded, I guess where the, you know, engines kind of pop out version looks really cool. Uh, but yeah, really nice page just showing off some of the stuff that Lego actually created themselves for like their Yoda Chronicles and uh, what was this one? I'm completely blanking. Freemaker Adventures uh, shows. So pretty neat. Uh, planet sets, very cool. They actually kept the whole thing on planet sets. I think it would have been nice to get a brick fact here. I guess they wouldn't want to say that it was a failure, but the the three here, you're only going to get this information from me, I guess. The three here, Hoth, Endor, and Alderaan with the Tan of the B-Wing and the Snowspeeder never released in North America because the, the series or line basically failed and no one wanted to buy them. So they had to cancel the line, but they had finished and were releasing these. So they released these in Europe, but never in North America. So all of the other ones, all nine were released everywhere, but then these three were kind of European exclusives, which was, I don't know, kind of cool. I guess I, I look at it as cool now, uh, but it was hard to get at the time for me. We've got some micro fighters here without really anything updated from within the last five years, just all kind of older sets. A brick fact there about the mini Jack 14's stealth starfighter. This next page actually has some updated micro fighters with the razor crest on there and the N1 starfighter. Looks like we've got all of the mini sets here. I think this page is unupdated from what we've seen in previous years, but it does show off a lot of the really cool older mini sets. So it's really neat to be able to have that for people that are maybe, maybe if this is your first visual dictionary you're actually going to get to experience looking at some of these for the first time i'm sure a lot a lot of cool sets here set like this like clone walker never released in north america i think this one was only in the uk through a newspaper if i remember correctly uh this i believe is the only poly bag with a true minifigure that one being the staff without a true minifigure in the battle droid but this one was released in north america and it had a figure all the other ones for the star wars don't have figures it's really weird don't know why other themes like Batman get figures. And I don't know why the ultimate collector series page here. we got Darth Maul just built that one recently for my own collection. Beautiful set would highly recommend if you ever get the opportunity to own that it has aged reasonably well for a 23 year old set at this point. The rebel blockade runner is also still very good. It's huge. That thing is massive. It's way bigger than you would think. Still my favorite set of all time, the 2010 UCS Imperial shuttle. And then a couple of other goats here with the death star two and the Imperial star destroyer there from 2019. This one very, very overdue for a really remake but i guess yeah maybe no ucs slave one is going to be shown up yeah no ucs slave one at all no way the tie fighter the y-wing r2d2 but not the new r2d2 why this is supposed to be updated <laughs> x-wing or not the x-wing i saw x the x-34 luke's land speeder we've have other advanced builds i think previously they gave this a whole page i can't remember yeah they have the 2023 ucs x-wing over here but not the 2022 or 21 yeah 21 ucs r2d2 Make that make sense. Uh, the UCS B-Wing, very cool set, but was seemingly overpriced at the time. Didn't sell very well. I ended up, actually, I got this one for half price in 2013 for my birthday. It was $100 instead of $200. That was a good May 4th sale. That was probably the best discount they ever offered for May 4th was half off on the year prior's UCS set. That'll never happen again. Oh, well, there you go. Just like I was saying, the Technic page remains unchanged, but for good reason. There's literally nothing to update. So like, why would you change it? Very cool though to see the Destroyer Droid. I just finally built that one for my own collection. I have some of these other ones, but I've never built them. So this is actually the first Technic set that I've really experienced built. And I gotta say, I actually think these get a bad rap. Well, I've only built the one, but it has such a cool function. Like it's crazy that it's able to look like the thing, but still have the really cool functionality. And I know the battle droid has a cool function to like sit down. Obviously you can see the compressed form of the pit droid there. I don't know what some of these other ones do. I just haven't done the research on them. I'm not too knowledgeable on it, like on the whole, but very cool subline that I am starting to tackle on the channel. So this review should be out soon, if not already, depending on when you're watching this video. So just look up M and R and then the set number. And if I have a review of it, you'll find it. So yeah, pretty sick stuff there with the tech Technic sets, just uh, something we'll probably never see come back. I don't think they perform too well, and they're ugly. I mean, most of them are just ugly, but I don't know. Th this one has a nice charm to it. Kind of weird that they did the brick built figure page when they have the other advanced builds page here, but these really just belong here. Like, you may as well just completely get rid of this and put another UCS set there. Just don't really see the point of that. Uh, buildable figures, luckily, just getting one page there. <laughs> don't, oh man, they should have put Jin Air, so that would have been funny. That would have been really funny. Uh, mechs and helmets getting their own pages. So they did do a little bit of work to, new, to update the book here with actually some good stuff. Again, it would be nice, right? We're looking, the last book came out before helmet sets existed. It would be nice if they actually had all of the modern helmet sets in here. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing the right thing by complaining about this, but it feels like if you're doing an updated book, like every five years, 
Whatever came out in the last five years should be in the book. And then you can decide what you want to take out of some of the older stuff. Like the next book, if it had a page where it's only some of the helmet sets, that's fine. If it's the first book after a set came out, it should be in the book so that it's, you know, properly documented. I don't know. I just feel like that's half complete there because it's missing half the helmet sets. Uh, we have the dioramas, the seasonal sets. I think we actually have all the dioramas there. That is shocking, at least up to date uh, to when this book was released. Seasonal sets here, and then they show off some of the holiday characters. So that's kind of nice. And then finally, we get to Beyond the Brick, which, which is one of the most interesting sections every time to me. I love seeing the behind the scenes of Lego Star Wars. And unfortunately... And I tell you, unfortunately, they have dropped the ball. They did no work. They added no value here at all. Well, just while I was flipping through, so you know, you're getting a worse book, I guess. Uh, the last book had two whole entire double pages dedicated to those mini sets we were just looking at, but that's not the point of what I'm doing. I guess the same for seasonal sets, just slimmed down. So this is the 2019 Beyond the Brick section, and at the time, a lot of these pictures were new. The picture of the Porg, the picture of Lando, there's the Enfys Ness on her speeder bike, you had the Dewback picture, that was new, like a lot of new pictures there. And then with this new book, oh, reused picture, reused picture, reused picture, reused picture. Oh, wow, a picture of a box. This page is an opportunity, and this is a wasted one of those opportunities. This page is an opportunity to give people a peek behind the scenes at LEGO Star Wars that you otherwise can never get. They never share anything cool like this type of stuff. But unfortunately, like this is just a picture of the set in someone's hand. That's a picture of the set in someone's hand. It's not even a prototype picture, which is what you're looking for, right? It's the beyond the brick. It's the behind the scenes stuff. Historically, that is what it has been in these other books. And if we go back to the 2009 book, they have a whole page about the community. They wouldn't dare do that these days. And a whole page about merchandising. We're not gonna see that in this new book either. But really what I'm looking for is like this page here. So at the time, look, you're not wasting space on a picture of a box art from a set that you could see on the shelves. That's lame. They have all brand new, never before seen behind the scenes images of Lego Star Wars showing some of the design. I think that's Jens there. I don't know who that is, but showing some of the behind the scenes stuff on what's being worked on, showing like unseen prototype models or like work in progress model, unseen prototype model there, just kind of a behind the scenes desk shot. And then so many different shots of like characters that are being put together, the complete minifigure collection there, the George Lucas figure that's like crazy. And I just realized I looked at this picture a thousand times that's got to be a computer mouse it's a ridiculous computer mouse but it's a computer mouse and then they would show other really cool behind the scenes photos of them working on stuff just so cool this book goes and throws away that opportunity almost entirely the only new picture we have here is this picture of hugh yang's head mold coming together everything else is a complete reuse they've made so many cool sets in the last five years that they could have shown like behind the scenes progress on like a really cool prototype version of different sets who knows there's so many opportunities there and it's all completely wasted to use reused pictures you know what's on this page the exact same picture we just saw the exact same picture we just saw. How useful. Would you look at that? It's a set in the guy's hand. I almost want to say it's is it the same picture zoomed in? Okay, it's not the exact same picture zoomed in, but I mean, it effectively is. It's not actually showing us anything cool. The Masazi Cantina is an 18 plus set. Working on it was a bonanza for the graphic designers. The printed and stickered decorations include lots of tiny details, which are hugely appreciated by fans. Wow, no, first off, yes, tiny details are hugely appreciated by fans. So when it's the opposite, of course, we don't appreciate it, by the way. But like clone troopers, hello. But like, why are we, why not use a cool behind the scenes picture? Same for the Emperor's Throne Room. It, so it talks specifically here about the Emperor's Throne Room and how it was tough to design for like making sure that there was no stress on things. Why not use a behind the scenes picture of what it looked like while you were building it? What what previous sketch model rendition existed of it that like was not good enough? That's what people want to see out of a book like this. It's so sad to see that this is what it's become. It's just using pictures from Google. You can pause and read some stuff up there if you want. We've got a picture of some of the people that are on the team there. And then, yeah, there's that Hugh Yang picture. There's technically a new picture, but it's like, I mean, we Bo-Katan, but that's a cool behind the scenes picture at least. Like you see how the minifigs are designed and you see that they know all the details and that when they do mess things up, they should know that they mess them up. But you know, we won't get into that here. So next page, a lot more text. And this one actually, again, like nothing good. All Google picture, Google picture, Google picture, Google picture. Like what a waste. Um, this one is kind of a behind the scenes picture, but again, you don't see anything cool. Like you just see the box boxes for like sets we all have and have seen. I would almost argue this is the best and only good behind the scenes picture because you actually see a little bit of prototyping for Grogu's face there. Like, I think that's what this is. You can barely see it, but it is there and that's nice. But like, how, man, 
just what a fall this book like could be so cool but it's just like why have good cool pictures when you cannot okay so they write a lot more about lego star wars here the most important thing on this page is this paragraph right here they ask how do you engage with the lego star wars fan community and they say we're very interested in hearing what fans have to say the design team pays attention to online product reviews and listens to what youtubers have to say about our sets so uh yeah there you have it i guess the lego designers watch our youtube videos so hopefully they're listening to the criticisms that we're putting out there and making things right. Uh, clearly it's not working in a lot of ways. There's still a lot of things really wrong with Lego Star Wars. It could very easily be fixed. It's really nonsensical in a lot of ways what's going on. Um, but, you know, they, they say they listen to people. They're probably really just listening to like the paid chills that are out there. It sucks that I have to say that, but that's the reality of what's going on. Um, so, yeah, they say they go to events like Star Wars Celebration, which, again, just kind of adding on to this, just a store. A fan told me that he went up to the minifigure guy. Guy. I won't point him out, but he went up to the minifigure guy at Star Wars Celebration and asked him about some like the 212 helmet that's clearly blatantly really bad and wrong asked him what was wrong with it. And the minifigure designer guy said nothing was wrong with it. So like lying to fans, that's big problem, big, big, and just like ignoring something that is so obviously bad just a big problem. So they attend product releases. Uh, mm -hmm, do they? I don't know. I don't know. Last time I saw anyone at a product release, they do box signings in stores. Uh, it's been a while for that as well. I think say it's always fun to meet fans and hear what they think and receive some of their energy, which is really rewarding. We also ask our fans for input on the development of sets as well. The UCS Republic gunship <laughs> set uh, was decided by a uh, poll for fans. Oh boy. What a one to mention and not go in detail on. Also, so like why wouldn't you mention the file first battle pack talking about the community hello i don't know man but what a paragraph i'm not you comment what you think below but i'm yeah i'll leave it there pretty sure they've talked about this sort of thing in kind of every visual dictionary but they talk about how they like put a set like the ucs falcon into an oven to make sure it can like withstand some heat which is kind of cool and then they talk a little bit about the exclusive darth maul figure which is the you know i think we saw that a little bit early so yeah um pretty cool just some behind the scenes but uh what am I saying? It's not pretty cool. It's kind of lame. And I'm not just saying that to say it. Here's the 2014 Beyond the Brick section. So many brand new behind the scenes photos where you can see in the office, you can see the bins of figures. Actually, that one might be a reused photo, but everything else on here was brand new. You see so many prototype Sandcrawler models there. Prototype ATAT -AT models. Prototype... Uh, I don't know if that one's a prototype, but he's working on the set at the desk. Uh, you have actual like prototype models probably in the background. I haven't looked too in depth at that picture. You have prototype Luke Skywalker mech right there. I think that's a defibrillator tank. I can't remember, but there's, that's definitely another prototype Lego Star Wars build. Uh, the prototype Dewback mold, and then they show like the prototype UTAT. That's why I'm so upset about this book being all reused pictures because it's the one opportunity we get every five years to get cool behind the scenes pictures and to waste it really stinks. Anyway, that is the back cover of your book. And that is my flip through rant and review about the Lego Star Wars visual dictionary for 2024. I think it's a cool visual dictionary. I think there's some cool stuff. If you're a casual or newer fan of Lego Star Wars, you may find some enjoyment in this book. Espe comparison is the thief of joy. As I showed you, there are other better years that we have had where they show cooler things. A lot of the stuff here is completely reused. All right, to wrap it up, I couldn't help myself from 2019 to 2024's book. There are 77 more or less completely unchanged pages. As we showed, there's like slightly different borders and things, but everything else, the pictures, the information, exactly the same, same layout and everything. There's five pages that I defined as like slightly modified. Basically, like if they had moved this probe droid to a T6 and the T6 to the probe droid, that's kind of what I defined as that. There are 36 updated pages. So like remove old TIE fighter, put in new TIE fighter type of updates, but same layout, just moving in new thing from old thing. And then there are 30 completely new pages. So that is the breakdown from old book to new book. Is it worth it for you if you have the old one? One, trying to help you out there so that's the numbers breakdown i wasn't going to do it but i couldn't help myself unless you really want that darth maul figure or you want to have a complete collection of all of them like i have I, I could see wanting to pass on this visual dictionary. I don't see a reason to go out and buy it because it's not like it's got anything super cool in it outside of darth maul uh, if anyone's watching that has anything to do with this book please 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 put some cool stuff in there man that's just what made these other books so legendary to me i grew up with this book this book has so much cool stuff this book even had cool stuff at the time, obviously reused now. So like, just 
I really hope they can go in and add some actual cool behind the scenes stuff in the 2029 edition. The only bit of hope I have is that a few months after filming this video, they are releasing an ultimate insider's guide. I'm not sure if it's published by the same people over at DK or not, but this book could have a lot of what I'm hoping for, although it could just be UCS sets. It's really hard to tell. We know no other information other than what you can see here right now, but there's a chance this one has a ton of behind the scenes stuff and has all the cool stuff I'm looking for in this book that should be in this book anyway, but could also be in this book. Anyway, let me know what you think about this visual dictionary in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and you can check out more LEGO Star Wars set reviews, not visual dictionary reviews, on the end screen now.